say hi everybody how are you doing thank you so much for joining me tonight for sip and stitch so um, let's everyone keep their fingers crossed I think I have finally figured out technology <laughs> So um, first off, I want to tell everybody hi. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you're new here, I'm Carly Bell, and I like to get together with y'all on every other Friday night for a live uh, machine embroidery tutorial that we call Sip and Stitch. And so I have my sip ready. I really need it this week. It was a long, long week. Um, but I'm so excited to be here with y'all tonight. We got a really fun project that we're going to do. And first, I wanted to say hi to everyone in the chat and ask, can you hear me okay? Because I have a very nifty new device here called a microphone. <laughs> and I hope that it works well, and I hope that it is a lot better than last Sip and Stitch uh, video where we heard the humming noise of my computer the whole time. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad the sound is good. So, um, Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. So let me tell my girls hi. Khan, Carol, Brenda, thank you so much for moderating. Let's see. Hi, Delia. Let's see. I saw somebody's first time. Where was it? Kimberly. Yay. I'm glad you're here. Oh, you're going to miss the fan noises, Carol. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. No humming, woo, hi Star, hi Rosemary, hi Amber. Amber, I got all kind of good stuff for you, girl. If you and I need to have a chat. I might have this live thing finally figured out. Y'all wanna see some fancy stuff? Let me show you my fanciness I have right here. So here we have the brother persona. Um, persona, I always say it, I have no clue how I'm supposed to say it. I say it different every time I say it, so I apologize in advance. <laughs> but fancy embroidery machine we'll be using tonight and then I also have this camera for I oh know that ain't the one I want I want this one um, this is gonna be our work area where you could see the fabrics we're using tonight my heat and bond and we'll cut our appliques here and the hoop we're using tonight so how do you like my fanciness I'm so excited. I nerd out about this kind of thing. Um, so y'all have to excuse my excitement. <laughs> but um, so let's see. Thank you, Monica. I feel very, very accomplished. Let, let me tell you, I've been working on this for months now, trying to make this better. And I think I might finally almost have it. I think I need a couple more battery things, but I'm very excited. <laughs> okay, nerd tonight. Um, so a couple things I wanted to tell y'all. Um, if you are not already subscribed to my email newsletter, I have a link for it in the description below. I've, um, I send out an email newsletter every week, usually on Thursdays, and that's telling you what's going on in my craft room, in the group, and for Sip and Stitch. So for those of y'all on the email newsletter, y'all saw last week I think I put all the details about what was going on for tonight's sip and stitch so I'm a little better with getting that out and on time so if you're not already subscribed please go down and click that below and you'll get my emails uh, secondly if you're not already in the Facebook group you need to come join us um, we have some really exciting things going on in there also a link down in the description box below for the Facebook group um, I have a new um, embroidery best friend, uh, or best embroidery friend, like Carol um, and Brenda and Khan. I met a new friend through the group. Her name is Ashley. And just coincidence, she is from the New Orleans area. And her and I got to talking and we were talking about wholesale blanks. So one of the big things with us um, embroidering is we always want the real, like me personally, I love the kids stuff. So I want the cutesy boutique looking kids outfits. Um, also, we've been having a lot of requests of like, where's the best place to get towels? Um, so, and bags, like different things to embroider, but at a cheaper price. So, I mean, sometimes we can find things at Walmart and Hobby Lobby. That's not um, too bad, but some of the, the nicer things are expensive. So my new friend, Ashley, um, is 
has businesses already where she has wholesale accounts set up. And so she graciously offered to help us purchase things at wholesale pricing. So if you go in and join the Facebook group and go to the guide section, I don't know if I organized it well, but you should see something about Wholesale Blank's catalog and it will show you the things that she is offering to buy this month and next month. Um, I think she has deadlines. So one of the deadlines is actually tonight. So after this video, go check out that catalog and see if there's anything you wanna add before she closes her ordering for tonight. But I have a few things that she gave me that I could show you. So one, we're gonna do this for a sip and stitch. This is so cute. This is a seersucker preschool backpack. So um, I think we might make this into a, a dancing bag for Elise. And then I got a bunch of goodies in here to show you some more seersucker bags and baby items. Like I love this. This is a really, this is a lightweight thermal baby blanket and it comes in several colors. And what else I wanted to show? Oh, the towels. The towels I really like. So those are baby items, bags, and then we have these nice kitchen towels. I think she's gonna have these in blue and red. And then these white kind of waffle weave um, kitchen towels. Also really nice quality. Like you could tell like how nice they are. So we'll be using all these for some future sip and stitch products, uh, projects. So if you're interested in any of that, go join the Facebook group. Look in the guide section for the wholesale. You'll see the catalog and the ordering instructions if that's something y'all are interested in. Okay. And then, so. Do, do, do. Thank you, Carol, for putting the link for the group. Hi, Stacy from Shreveport. <laughs> okay, so I'm just checking the chat and see what's going on. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, I think I got lighting. I think I'm finally getting the hang of this. It's only taken me like a year. It's fine. <laughs> so tonight's project, super, super cute. So um, Shannon from Lovely Leaf Appliques, I hope I'm remembering her title right. Um, she so kindly um, offered a coupon code for her design. So her the majority of her Etsy shop is in the hoop tooth fairy pillows and let me tell you they are so stinking cute and they have so many designs and so many choices so this is the one that we will be making tonight um this is i just picked a, a um i just like the tooth with the bow like that was super cute um from me but they had a tooth that looked like a fairy it had little fairy wings on it um, they have all kinds of cute boy designs all the superheroes um trucks anything you can think of she has and then she has you know specific themed ones so go check out her shop but i have the links for this design down below um, and the way the designs work is you purchase the size that you want so i made this one as a trial run to um to go through it and plus i have two girls so i need two pillows anyway um but this is a six by ten size so I stitched this out on my NQ 3600D machine, which has a six by 10 hoop. And then tonight we're gonna do the five by seven design for Elise. And we're gonna do that on my brother, Persona. So um, let me go back up. Uh, so that is the project that we're doing tonight. And I have to say, I really, didn't start, I didn't start to get into in the hoop projects until last year and they are my favorite. I, I really love <laughs> making in the hoop designs. They're fun, they're easy, they're so satisfying and there's no worrying about hooping and placement and all those things that kind of stress us out sometimes. None of that, we just, just go, just hoop the stabilizer and go. So um, if there are no questions, um, we can go ahead and get started. Let's see. Angela said she purchased several from Etsy, so yay, we have to make one. All right, so 
Um, for our pillow tonight, I'm using the Persona. Um, when I purchased my Persona, it came with two hoops. It came with an eight by eight hoop and a four by four hoop. So although this is a five by seven design, I'm just gonna hoop my tear away in this hoop and it's still gonna stitch out the five by seven pillow. So I'm starting with the eight by eight hoop and a sheet of tear away stabilizer. And so I'm just gonna place that in it. So let me show, see if this works. So here is the hoop. I'm just taking this part out, putting the tear away in and pressing it down like that. So now we have our tear away hooped and it's nice and taut. And y'all let me know, are y'all hear, hearing me okay when I'm switching between cameras? I want to make sure that my microphone is working for all of them. <laughs> So, um, all right, I have my hoop. I already have my machine turned on. Great, okay. Um, I already have the machine turned on. I checked my bobbin. I have a pretty much full bobbin and I oiled it. Um, so a couple things I wanted to tell you. So here's the machine. Um, so, the design I'm doing is on this machine. Obviously, this is this is my fancy upgrade I got after having a flatbed machine for the longest time, and it does have a large hoop. However, this design can be done on any flatbed machine. So even though I'm doing this tutorial tonight on the Persona, if you don't have this machine, you could still follow. You're still going to hoop your tearaway in your five by seven hoop. All the steps are gonna be the same. It's just that I'm doing it on a different machine. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear for everyone that you know this design, this project isn't specific for this machine. You can tailor all of the tutorials that I do to work for the machine that you have. So I have this. Now um, I, I oiled everything, my bobbin is loaded. So that is good to go. So now I'm just going to find the design on my USB stick. And this is a single needle free arm machine. So we're still gonna have some color changes up here. I have all my colors set and ready and I'll show you the fabrics Elise picked out herself because you know how she is. She needs to have what she wants. Um, there's a little pin that comes with this too. So we're gonna be jumping around a lot with the, and to make it easier with this machine so that I don't have to change colors so often, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna jump around the design itself. So here's the design and there it is. And it's turned on its side and I can turn it since I know it's gonna fit in the hoop. So I'm gonna hit set, rotate, so now I'm not sure if you can see it clearly. There's a little bit of glare, but um, the, the design is facing me now to where I could see it clearly and is not turned. So if I wanted to double check to make sure that the design fits in the hoop, I hit embroider and then I can trace it pressing this dashed line uh, square right here. So now it's tracing the design and showing me that it's all in the hoop. I use the trace feature for every project I do to make sure that one, it's in the hoop correctly because I do a lot of projects using my easy frames um, and that you, is really important for tracing. And then also two, to make sure it's placed on the item I'm embroidering right where I want it to be. So that is it and it's ready to go. So I have the white thread loaded because um, my first stitch I'm really doing is white. So I like to do as the least amount of color changes as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit lock and start. And this is gonna be the placement stitch showing me where to place my fabric. So this is basically going to be a um, displacement stitch. But it's gonna be a white rectangle. Can y'all hear me okay over the stitching?
Let me know if y'all heard me okay over the stitching because I don't know how much the microphone picks up. Okay, great. All right, so we're done with that. So let me show y'all what Elise picked for her fabrics. Um, so I got this cute, they had it, um, Walmart has really stepped up their game with fabric fat quarters and fat quarter little bundles of five. I, I really appreciate that because one, you can't ever get fabric actually cut at Walmart. <laughs> so it's nice to have it to where you can just grab it, but they have some really cute stuff. So this was in a little fat quarter bundle I picked up the other day and it's a cute pink and blue tie dye pattern. So I have two pieces cut out and I'm gonna show you how I knew how big to make this. My first, my trick for being prepared for y'all. Um, I use Embrilliance um, Essentials embroidery software. And so I opened the design in Embrilliance and I um, added Elise's name as a BX font and that's linked in the description box below. It's called Twinkle Star font. And then I printed it out and the printout is true to size. So this is gonna be the size of my pillow and all the shapes of the tooth and the bow and the pocket are all true to size. So I just put my paper on my craft table and I've held my fabric over the paper and I cut it to where it was bigger than all my pieces. So I have my pillow front and back. This is what she picked. And then I have some white fleece for the, um, the tooth. And this is the same fleece. If you watched the um, scarf tutorial we did at the beginning of the year, um, we did an applique um, fleece scarf. And it's, this is also from Walmart. It comes in a pack like this and it's uh, I think a yard and a half pre-cut. So I got a few colors of this. So that's what I'm using for my white material tonight. And then Elise picked this blue, really cute um, dotted, it's like a honeycomb dotted pattern. Um, she picked that for the applique of the background and then a pink of the same pattern for the pocket. I'm not sure if you could see. Um, but I really tried to convince her to pick like this polka dot pink for the pocket instead, but she was not having it at all. <laughs> she wanted this pink with this blue, even though it's the same uh, pattern on the fabric. I'm like, whatever you want, <laughs> it's her pillow. Needs to be how she likes it. Um, so this is all her tonight. This is all her picking. And then, so that's the, the applique pieces. Oh, and then she wanted, so Abby had a gold bow. She wants purple bow. So I have, this is purple HTV. I think I forgot. I don't think I put that in the supply list, but you can use HTV, a uh, glitter HTV as um, pieces for applique. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing designs, if you want to add a little pop of glitter. Um, so that's fun for this. And I'm going to use this for the bow. And she picked this glitter purple ribbon I had. So I have two pieces cut that are each 18 inches long. And I saw some other people, another option that you can do is just have one piece of ribbon and instead of tying it in a bow, like I have here, you could sew it to where it's already just done like this to where then you can just hang it on the doorknob or like my kids have little uh, bed posts at each of the corner um, that we could hang this on the bed post even as well. So that's an option for you. If you don't have a lot of ribbon, you can use just one piece. All right. So <laughs> thank you, Con. All right. So before we move on, are there any questions, Miss Carol? My question keeper. Oh, the Walmart Canada sewing section is, is lacking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mine usually is too. I, it just recently they've, they've stepped up their game. Uh-oh, one camera went out. Let's see if it's back on. Yep, okay, maybe so. 
we'll see how this works fingers crossed all right so I did my placement stitch um, for the pillow so we're gonna take one of these pieces now and place that over it so let me show you the machine oh. try again okay um, so here is going to be the front of our pillow and I'm just making sure that the fabric is poking out all the sides of the placement stitch that it did and I really don't think I need to tape it down I ironed it ahead of time so it's lying nice and flat so I think I can just go ahead hit lock and start the next stitch and so this is going to tack down the front of the pillow All right, I see Kimberly just asked if we can stitch this out on the PE-800. Definitely. Any machine, the PE-800 um, has a 5 by 7 hoop. That machine or bigger, you'll be able to do this design on. Just use your 5 by 7 hoop, hoop the tear away stabilizer just like I'm doing, and it's going to be the same exact process from that point on. Okay? So, the next step is it's going to do all the placement and tack down stitches for all of the applique pieces. So next is the placement for the tooth. So I'm just gonna hit lock and go and I'm just keeping that white thread going so that it can, um, I don't have to change colors, especially when you're doing applique and the applique is a um, satin stitch, you don't, see the placement stitch and the tack down stitch. Um, so it really doesn't matter what color thread you do for those. So here is the white fleece. And for all of my applique projects, I like to iron something called um, heat and bond light on the back of the fabric. So you see it here. And so I, I, I cut a piece that fit on the back of the fabric and it's got like a paper on one side and then now this it's putting the adhesive left on the fabric so now it has the shiny side and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that which reminds me I need to turn my iron on okay so now I'm putting that here right on top of the placement stitch And again, I don't think I need to tape it down or anything. I think it's gonna stay just fine. And now it's gonna do the tack down stitch for the tooth. Thank you, Carol, for posting the link to the design for Lydia. So Lydia, Carol posted where the design is from. It's also, everything is linked in the description box below. I, I have the design linked, the font linked, my machine linked, um, most of the supplies that I use. But for a list of specific supplies for, the, uh, for this particular project, you can always find on the Sip and Stitch homepage, which is carlybell.com slash Sip and Stitch. Um, and that is linked down below. So anytime you, you see the Sip and Stitch homepage, that's where you wanna go to see details on the specific projects. And so if you just scroll, like at the top is gonna to be tonight's project right now. And as you scroll down will be last week's project and the week before. I am in the middle of trying to reorganize my website to make it a little more user-friendly to go back and find uh, past projects and the videos to those past projects. So bear with me on that. But um, the home page is usually where you can find everything you need for this, whatever project we're doing tonight and look at, back at past projects. So now we are done with the applique for the, the tooth. Um, the next part is gonna be the bow. And since the bow is right on top of the tooth, I'm gonna to go ahead and take this off and trim it. 
And we're also gonna do my little trick with ironing. Oh, I need to turn on my iron. So I'm just gonna pop this off. And we are gonna go to my craft table. And so let me plug in my little iron. Okay, so here is the tooth. You can see it there. And you can kind of see where, even though I used white thread, you can see you know, where it's stitched out. And I'm using my favorite applique scissors. Again, all these supplies are linked in the description box below, but I just kind of lift this up. Now, and this particular material is not fun to cut, even though these are my good, sharp, new scissors. I still, I remember when we did the applique on the scarf, like, it does not cut easily like regular woven cotton thread does. So I'm just putting it underneath the back part of the fabric and pulling it up and kind of using that as a guide of where to cut. And you just want to cut as close to your stitches as you can um, without actually, you know, snipping them. And you don't want to have too much fabric away from your stitches because then it might show through. Like I think I did like right here. You see this little spot right here? Like I didn't cut trim white quite close enough. You can see a little bit fuzz on the outer side of the satin stitch on this one. So let me go back to the video, make sure I could see. Okay, so I'm just trimming this. Everybody needs to get big props to my husband for keeping the kids occupied because with this new live setup that I have, I have wires everywhere for the, the kids with, and tripods that the kids would trip over. <laughs> so I had to have a talk with them. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need y'all to not come in the room tonight. No shenanigans. Cause you know, they love to come in here and just be crazy. Cause that's my kids. But let's see, Lisey might come make an appearance after a while, but I told her it's not good for her to come because she's just going to trip on everything. Oh, I also forgot to tell y'all about what my husband did to my, my craft table. If you noticed, I'm standing behind my craft table. He, um, my craft table used to be, so that is all done. You could see. Um, my craft table used to be hooked to the wall and, um, and you couldn't move it around, but we detached it from the wall, made it freestanding and added, uh, wheels to the bottom. So I'm super excited about that. All right. So now we're going to go back to the machine. Okay. We have our tooth cut out and... Pop that back in, and now it's going to do the placement stitch for the bow. Again, we're just keeping that white thread going so that um, I don't have to do any thread changes. <laughs> I got a full wheel and craft table, that's right. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Christina B. saying she's going to rewatch this once she gets an embroidery machine. She's thinking about the SE 1900. That's a great machine to start with, Christina, and it's one that you can actually find in stock right now because, let me tell you, machines are hard to find. And unless, I mean, even, even my big machine is hard to find. Um, so there, it, there's very limited stock right now of embroidery machines. So the SE 1900 is a great machine. It is in stock. And it is equivalent to the PE 800 that is a great starter machine. The only difference that the SE 1900 is it's a combination machine. It's also a sewing machine. So you can take the embroidery arm off and put on the, the regular um, arm and use it as a sewing machine. So that's a really cool thing. If you are in need of both of those machines or you don't already have a sewing machine, you can have two in one. So that's a great machine to start with. 
Um, okay. Handy husbands are great to have. Yes, they are. It's like pulling teeth to get him to do it. But when he does it, he does a great job. <laughs> Y'all know my husband's helped me a lot because he built this table. He built my big pink L-shaped table. And I have, we made a YouTube video making it um, on, you could see it on my channel. Um, we made it last spring. So you could see how he built that. He added shelves to my walls. He does so much. So I'm super thankful for him. Um, so they, we did the placement stitch of the bow. So now we're going to add HTV. And so with HTV, it, it comes with a, what we call a clear carrier sheet. So normally when I'm cutting this on my silhouette, I'm going to put that clear carrier sheet down and I'm going to cut and then, um, you weed it and you use the carrier sheet to help stick it to the shirt or whatever you're ironing, you heat pressing it on. But for applique, we want to go ahead and remove that clear carrier sheet. Okay. So now I'm taking that off and I probably don't need that big of a piece. Let me see. Let me save this. I'm using my paper as a guide here. Yep. Okay. So I took this off. So now I don't need this anymore. So now I just have the purple HTV. And so we're going to get, you know, normal, do glitter sides up, adhesive side down. I did forget to, we'll do that after. I forgot to iron the tooth. <laughs> so let me show you that. So here is the glitter. And I think this will stay in place. I might hold it with, here we go, my pencil. Let me just hold it here. Okay, so next I could see on my screen that the bow is next. So I think I'm just going to hold it with my pencil here to make sure it stays in place because this is a little lighter and then let it go. So, and the cool thing, I'm still kind of nervous about it, but the cool thing when you use HTV as an applique, depending on how good the stitches are, you can actually just tear it away, but I'll show you that in a little while. So I'm going to leave that now. So when we take it off, we can trim everything at one time. So the next is the placement stitch for the, I don't know what the name of that kind of shape is, but it's kind of like a plaque um, shape going around. So we'll do that next. Madeline saying she has the SE 1900 now and she's thinking of investing in the Recoma 10 needle. Yes, Madeline, write me a message, girl. I think we've actually already talked, but um, yeah, the Recoma, it, it's so funny because people are so nervous about getting a machine and they get a machine and it's, it's nerve wracking getting to learn it. So this is, this is my piece. I'm pe peeling off the heat and bone. Um, it's nerve wracking learning the machine and the whole embroidery process and how to stabilize and what thread to use and how to get designs. And, but once you get it and you learn it, you so quickly want a bigger machine with bigger hoops and more needles and it's, you go down a hole. So, um, just a warning for all of y'all out there. It, it does, uh, it's really, really enjoyable and you're going to want more stuff. <laughs> So, okay, now we did the placement stitch. Now we're going to do the tack down stitch of the, um, what did I call it? Like a shield looking kind of design. Okay. And I think that can just sit in place and that's going to go around. All right. Yes. Chopsticks are good. I was looking for my chopsticks, but Elise actually stole them. Um, Yep. Um, Tina um, says she uses medical tape. I, I, y'all know I'm a big fan of uh, masking tape. I love 
I, I usually mask all this down. I just find it's, it's not really necessary with this design, but I usually do use a lot of masking tape. Okay, next is the pocket. Now, one of the suggestions that Shannon, the digitizer has, and when you buy the design, she gives you a nice PDF of instructions to follow for this design. Um, but one of her suggestions is not to just take a piece of fabric and, and put it where the pocket's gonna be, but take a bigger piece and fold it in half and then put that folded side at the top. So what I did to make sure that the, if I'm doing two pieces like that and it's folded and um, I don't want it to puff out, I put a piece of heat and bond just on one side. So I'm gonna peel this off. So now when I put it on it's and I iron it, these two pieces are gonna stick together nicely and it won't puff, puff up after for any reason. So normally those kinds of things happen after you wash an item, which I don't think this particular pillow would get washed, but I like to use heat and bond for everything. So the next stitch is the placement stitch for the pocket. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and go iron this together. So I just ironed that while the placement stitch was going. And um, now the folded edge is gonna be the top here. And so again, I don't think it needs nothing to hold it down. Just make sure it's covering your placement stitch completely and go. notice it does not stitch along the top it's just doing the u shape so that the pocket is functional okay so now we are done with all the applique portion so we're going to take this off the machine and go trim everything and pass a little iron on it all right okay so that is done. So I was telling you that the um, heat transfer vinyl, I get nervous about it, but it can really be pulled. But sometimes I think it gets, it kind of goes through the stitches. It gets a little too close for comfort for me. I'd rather trim it. So here's my scissors. So I'm going to trim it. But I've done it before where I've just pulled it. Let's see. Let's try to pull the rest and see. No, it ain't working anyway. Okay, so that is trimmed. Um, now I'm gonna trim the, po oh crap. I made the pocket, I should have, I did it wrong. Okay, so you see how my fold is here? I should have made my fold line up with the top of these two things. It's fine, but the satin stitch will only be here, but the pocket will still.
my power off? Is it back on? I was rambling. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Doot, 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 doot. On, on. Sorry, I turned it off some kind of way. Now it's red. I think my batteries are going dead. <laughs> Let me text Chris and ask him to bring me batteries. What do I need? See, I'm not good at this. Double A. All right. Let me yell at Chris real quick. Chris, I need two double A batteries, please. Two yep. <laughs> okay. Thank y'all for bearing with me. I think my thing is going dead already. So <sighs> we'll see how that goes. Fun, fun. All right. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to change the batteries in this. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Yeah, then I'll just put them on the table in case I need them. Strong work. Strong work. Okay, we'll lose sound again for a second. I was telling everybody. Okay, back here. How can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right, yay. Okay, thank you. Sorry if I was rambling and mute for a minute. I was going on and on about Carol's riser. Um, okay. So I still have time to bring this microphone back. Maybe either that or I need better batteries. I don't know because it. I put new batteries in it the other day and I played with it. So thank you, Carol. Okay. All right, Norma had a question. Thank y'all for bearing with me. <laughs> uh, all right. A tooth pillow. I was asking what we're making. Yes, we're making a tooth fairy pillow. Look how cute. So the link for the design is down below and Carol's posted it a few times in the chat box, but it's in the description box. All right, let me find, Carol always has good humor and she always has good, like, like comeback phrases or I don't, I don't know the right word to use, but she always has witty comments that's what it is witty comments like they're always awesome all right norm i'm trying to find your question would you mind just repeating it for me okay i have two questions go ahead carol taking a sip yep so that's the link for the design for tonight Um, do, 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 do. do I have a code for the monster hoop on the persona? Tracy wants to know the speed, the persona. Okay, so monster hoop, are you talking about the dime monster hoop um, or snap hoop? Or are you talking about the mighty hoop that I used for the last sip and stitch? Um, Tracy, the persona goes up to 1000 stitches per minute and that is what I have it set on. 1,000 stitches per minute. So that if you're coming from a um, PE 800, the highest that one can go is 650. Um, if you're coming from the NQ 1600 um, or the NQ 3600D, like the machine I just got um, from Sewing Machines Plus, or the Baby Lock Flourish 2, all of those machines are kind of the same in the embroidery features. It has a six by 10 hoop. Those go up to 850 stitches per minute. So the Prasanna, the six needle, the 10 needle, they go 1,000 stitches per minute. And my Rakoma does 1,000. Chantel, I am sipping on my favorite little drinks. They're called Malibu Splashes. But I, use, I sometimes have 
and I have the when I when we first started my favorite cocktail I guess you would call it's called a painkiller and it's a rum drink with um, it's like dark rum pineapple juice orange juice cream of coconut and you sprinkle nutmeg on top and uh, I put the recipe for it. it's like all the way at the bottom of the sip and stitch homepage y'all should try it <laughs> okay so yeah Norma said the dime hoop yes so you can use so I have a link for that hoop um, in the group in the guide section I have a whole post all on magnetic hoops for the PE 800 and the NQ 1600 flourish 2 um, even the 4x4 machines so I have links to all of those and if um, the sewing machine plus links you can use the coupon code hello h-e-l-l-o to save 10% off okay so all right thank you carol so much for handling all the questions all right so the persona the biggest hoop is eight by eight so no it cannot fit a six by ten design so that's why i did this one on my nq 3600d um because that one has a six by ten hoop but i don't have she doesn't have an eight like a five by eight option or um six by eight option but that is something that if you found other designs, as long as it doesn't extend eight by eight, you can fit anything on the eight by eight, eight, by eight hoop. Oh, and uh, Shannon's here, um, leaf like on a tree. Um, I do have a coupon code, it's Carly Bell 20 to save 20% off the designs in Shannon's shop, leaf, uh, lovely leaf appliques. All right. Angela says she's scared to run her recomb at a thousand. Don't be scared, girl. The only time I slow my machines down is when I'm doing small, intricate, like small lettering stitching, then I slow the machine down. Or if it's doing like a super wide satin stitch, normally the machine will slow down itself, but I'll slow it down a little bit too. But um, no, I keep, keep them babies going. That's why they're, that's why you like, that's why they're awesome is because they're faster and you get your projects done faster and you can make more things. Okay. All right. Well, if y'all are ready, we are going to change threads. So let's go back to the machine. So this is when I'm going to start jumping around with things. Okay. So the bow is next and the bow is going to be purple. I don't think I'm going to stitch anything else purple on here. I think I'm going to do her name in pink. Oh no, actually the next stitch is, there is a bean stitch that goes down. I didn't do it on Abigail's pillow, so but we can do it on Elisa so y'all can see. Um, so here's just a solid satin. The design has the option to put a bean stitch and it stitches right in the middle of the satin, the satin stitch just to give it a little extra um, pop of color you can put in between. So. Maybe I'll do that in pink. Let's do pink next. So I'm going to cut the thread and up here, if you can see, no, I don't have the camera pointing, but above the thread rack, they have these two pieces that actually work as thread cutters. So I can do that. And so now my thread is cut and I'm going to take my pink and the way I tie a knot, Let's see, I'm trying to hold it low enough to where you could see, um, is I cross them and then I'm going to wrap twice. I'm going to wrap this pink around the white twice. And now I form my circle and then I'm going to wrap it twice at the top. And my pieces are too short. Okay. So wrap it around twice. So now I have, to, I have it wrapped around twice at the top and twice at the bottom. And now I'm going to pull and that forms a really good knot. So now I can go to the bottom and pull it until I see my pink come out. And now I press my needle thread button and I'm just holding it. They got two little prongs that pop out on other, either side of the needle and I do this and this piece cuts it. That's what those, 
the pieces up above the thread rack, that's what they look like. So they cut the thread, hit that again, and you see it pulled it through, but it just looped it. Normally it does pull it all the way through, but I'm going to take my little scissors and now it's good to go. So now it's going to do that bean stitch around the two so you can see how cute that looks. Sorry, I forgot. I should have turned off the light before we started so um, so y'all could see better. I know the light makes too much of a glare where it's hard for y'all to see the design while it's stitching. Okay, so that is, let me take it off so you can see how cute it is. This is the bean stitch going around the satin stitch. So it kind of stitches right in the middle of the satin stitch. So now the next thing that I want pink is the pocket and the name. So I'm gonna jump around on my screen to those next things while I have my pink thread on and loaded. So, oh, and actually the cheeks for the, the smiley face on it. So the next stitch is the bow. I don't want that one. So I'm gonna hit this needle with the, um, here it is. The needle with the plus minus, I'm gonna click that. So here's the needle minus, needle plus. These are gonna move around individual stitches. You can either go back one stitch, ahead one stitch, back 10 stitches, ahead 10 stitches, and so on. The spool with the minus and plus, that is gonna jump back or forward entire steps and all your steps are separated by color here so next is the bow so I'm gonna jump ahead after that is the cheeks my cheeks are pink so I'm gonna go ahead and hit ok lock and go y'all talking about Rakomas? Yeah, if you're interested in purchasing a Rakoma, um, I love my Rakoma. I've had great experience with the, um, with the company. Um, they, one of the things that I love is the support that they offer and the courses. Um, they sent me training before I got my machine to know what to expect and how to set it up. I had training after I got my machine all set up on how to use it. Um, the machine came with digitizing software and I take classes. Um, I usually sign up once a week for a different type of topic on how to use the digitizing software. And I really like that now they've changed. So the course, the, the classes were live so that you could ask questions, but now they made it to where they record the classes and they'll keep them. You have like a customer portal and those classes will be saved in your custom portal so I could go back and rewatch them if I want to like a refresher on how did I do that exactly or how did she go over that. So I really like that. But if you're interested in the Rakoma, feel free to message me or email me. I have a referral link um, in the description box below that um, if you use my link, it'll take you to a page where you fill out a form with your info and someone from Rakoma will call you and they'll answer all your questions They'll tell you about pricing. They'll tell you about financing. They do have 0% financing. Um, and since you used my link for it to fill out that form, if you do decide to buy a machine, you'll save $100 off your purchase. So please, you know, if you have any questions, email me, message me. I also just started an exclusive Facebook group for all of those, um, all of y'all that purchased a Rakoma through my link. I'm gonna have an exclusive Facebook group for y'all where I'll have extra trainings um, and videos, we can do um, lives, um, just like I have for the persona group. So that's a little perk of using my referral link. So y'all can try that out. And I have that also for the persona. So if you purchase the persona through me, I have, you get free virtual training with me and access to my exclusive group. We did a live in the persona group last week and it was great getting to talk with everyone and answer specific questions on the machine and things people wanted to know about. So 
that's one of the, the perks of if you're interested in either one of those machines, you'll get a little extra support and training from me personally. Okay, so we are done with the cheeks. So now I'm going to find the rest of the parts of the design that I want to be pink. So next on the step is the eyes and the mouth. So I'm going to do that in black. I'm going to save that for last. So I'm going to go to my needle plus minus and jump ahead. Okay, next is the outline of the blue fabric. So we're going to jump ahead. Then is the outline of the pocket. So I'm going to hit OK, lock, and go, because I do want that to be pink. Oops, almost knocked my drink over. That would have been good. <laughs> All right. All right, any questions? Does anyone want to see how to add the name to the pillow and in brilliance? Because I do have it to where I could show y'all my computer screen now and not hold my phone in front of the computer screen hoping y'all can see. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. All right, the scrap in Viva Monty, you want to see and brilliance? <laughs> Miss Lady B, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make the groups for the Persona and the Racoma, you know, just like what I say, exclusive to those who purchase it through me. However, in my regular Facebook group, we have plenty of people that have Racomas and we talk about the machine. And if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask them there and we can answer them for you. So you're not, you know, don't feel left out just because you didn't purchase it through me. We can still, you know, help with anything you need with the Racoma and the regular Facebook group. All right, Marissa wants to see too. Okay, so let me see if I could do this right. So, um, minus, minus this. Okay, so it's gonna look weird for a second, but then you should see um, my Embrilliance screen. So now you should be looking at Embrilliance. Um, and so I have the, the program open with the design. So this is showing you the final thing. But if I wanted to start from scratch, I can go to a new page and say you were doing this on your five by seven hoop. Um, right now I have my eight by eight hoop pulled up. So you would go here as a preference window and you would scroll down until you see 130 by 180, which also says approximately five by seven and hit apply and hit okay. Um, so we see it here, but it's going up and down and I want it to go horizontal. So what you can do is you can double click this and that changes it to horizontal. So now I'm ready to add my design um, and I can either open it or I can merge it since I already made a new thing. Um, Let's see, if I go to open, it's going to pull up my files. Oh goodness, it looks weird. Okay. Um, and I can show you how I have. So this is all of my embroidery files. Um, oh, and this reminds me, I'm supposed to upload a video Carol made. <laughs> Carol made a nice video on how to organize your embroidery files. Carol, please text me tomorrow and remind me to do this. Um, so I have them grouped alphabet numbers, animals, Christmas, Easter, however you want. I make a new folder every time I come up with something new, but I have in the hoop designs and there I have my five by seven, um, pillow and I haven't deleted them yet, but usually I just keep the PES and just the DST for the Racoma here. I'll just keep those two and the instructions, but Let's just pick that for now and hit OK. So there, there's the design and it's, all, and it's rotated. So I'm going to select it and rotate it here. No, that went forward. That ain't what I wanted. This one. So select it. This is the one that rotates it. This is going undo and redo. See, I'm already messing up. <laughs> Okay, so now the design is there. So now I'm gonna click out of it and I just go to this uh, 
create a lettering design. And these are where all my BX fonts are already installed. So I can choose, tonight I did Twinkle Star 0.5 inch. And see, you see it there. And I just changed the name. And I hit enter. And now I moved it to where I wanted. And there we go. So that's all you need to do for this design. It's automatically going to add the name last after all these stitches, but technically the name needs to be done after the pocket before you start where it starts to actually put these last three steps are to put the ribbon in and put the pillow together. You want the name to be stitched before that. Um, I move around a lot on my machine so that I I'm going to skip ahead to the name and then skip back to these other steps. If you want it to be in order, you can take it and drag, oops, drag it to where it's on a blue line right underneath the pocket. So now it's there and it made these other steps. Um, it used to be just two steps. Now it turned into three since we inserted Elise in there. So you could do that and save it. So that is it for and brilliance. So let's go back to the camera. You see me? All right. So that's the technology I've finally figured out, I think. Okay, so we're done stitching the um, pocket. So now we are going to jump ahead to the name. So like, like I just talked about, the, on my design, the name is at the end. But I'm going to jump ahead because I want my name to be pink. There it is. I'm gonna hit OK, lock, and go. Only thing is I hope. Yeah. Oops, okay. So I was supposed to press this. Um, because I messed up my pocket, it's actually getting really close to the bottom of the name. So I'm gonna use a little piece. Where's my masking tape? Here we go. I'm gonna tape that down so it doesn't get stitched. There we go. I'm gonna tape that down so it doesn't get stitched. I think it still should be fine. It'll be right underneath. But again, this is what I get for messing up the pocket. But it should still be cute. Uh, Elise was supposed to come and uh, and say ladybug ladybug <laughs> but um, I think her dad put on a good movie for her so and plus I know she would come in here like a tornado and knock everything down because <laughs> that's usually what she does um, let's see yes Carol you're probably gonna have to post it yourself <laughs> I'm terrible guys I really am like if I don't write stuff down like I wrote myself some notes to remember to tell y'all about the blanks about the group if I don't write it down I don't remember it and then my problem is, is I write stuff down and then I don't look at my paper I wrote stuff down on and then I don't remember <laughs> okay Kimberly wants to know the next PE 800 sip and stitch we'll definitely make the next sip and stitch a PE 800 I haven't decided on a project yet I was I was actually looking back at my notebook to see my list of things I wanted to do but um, I want to do a riser one but I think I'm about to actually mail my riser back to Carol for her to um, change something on it um, so I don't know if I'll have it back in time but we'll definitely do a project on the I have the 770 which is the older model of the 800 I'm actually supposed to borrow my friend's 800 for a video I want to make um, but yes, you better. <laughs> so y'all let me know in the chat, what kind of project do you want to see on the PE 800 for our next sip and stitch? Um, I know, will it be, when is the next sip and stitch? I should probably look at that, let's see. 
the next sip and stitch will be, oh, is that going to be Good Friday? I think that'll be okay. The second, April 2nd, I think that'll be okay. Maybe we can have sip and stitch and crawfish. How's that sound? <laughs> I might have some dirty hands while I'm working. <laughs> um, okay, but so yeah, Easter, so that's going to be the Friday before Easter, so kind of late we did our couple Easter projects last time um, Kat wants to know if perhaps you can do another sip and stitch focused on embroilings at that's what I was thinking Kat um, I was thinking that would be a good next project to do so um, do y'all want to do embroilings on the Good Friday the Friday before Easter April 2nd um, and then do a PE 800 riser project the Friday after that? Let me know what y'all think. All right. So, okay. Well, y'all think about that and what y'all want to do um, and what kind of project you want for the, if, if it's a non-riser project, just the PE 800 project, then we could do a riser one after. Let me know what kind of stuff you want to see what we've been doing a lot and I mean we can always do something again if you if you know for earlier people that haven't seen previous sip and stitches but whatever y'all want to do okay so I think we're done with all of the pink now so let me show you <laughs> my name is going to be right underneath I might end up cutting it because Elise won't know let's see which camera am I on this one um I might end up cutting this so you see how close it is to the name now and now that I I um I pulled it down it's kind of folding but it doesn't look too bad but I might end up still cutting it here so this is how it's supposed to look I did it right with Abby's because I looked at the PDF instructions before I started <laughs> but you see how hers the fold is right even with the the two satin stitch columns here that's how it's supposed to look supposed to look so do as I say and not as I do that's what my mom tells me all the time uh, all right so we put this back on and let's see what our next thread color is gonna be so uh, do, 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 do. it's telling me it's finished but it's not because I'm not done so it's a, it started off it started over with all the stitches so I'm actually gonna go backwards now so I have the bow, the face, and the blue. So let's go back to the bow. And that's going to be purple. So I'm going to cut my pink thread and tie on the purple. And this can be tedious when you first start, and I know for me, it, it really, it took me a while to make my fingers connect to my brain and do what I want them to do. I feel like I've gotten much faster and better at it, so it doesn't bother me anymore. But if it does bother you, this machine is not hard to thread at all. Okay, so there's that. Pull that through. I'm on the bow, so I'm going to hit lock and go. I put all my extra thread. I have a little bucket right here. I put them all in. So, that is stitching. Thanks, Shannon. I'm sorry I messed up. <laughs> I thought I had it all in my head where I'm like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Messed up the pocket. So, now talking about brim boards and risers. Yes. So, um, I think I have, I think I usually keep a link for the brim board. No, I need to make it where I always have a link for the brim board in my supplies down below. But if you're in the Facebook group, um, 
I have a supplies section and the guide section of the group and the brim board is there. Um, I need to probably add the risers to the guide section now too. But Carol has a, her own site where she sells her items on, I think it's called iCraft.com. Um, and she can link all of that for you. So Kat, we'll go, I went over the riser. I showed the riser, was it two sipping stitches ago? I showed the riser and I show how it works. I don't have it um, on my table right now easily for me to show you, but if you look back at, um, which sip and stitch was it? Was it the Q&A one we did? Um, yeah, because it was right when I got back from Florida, because that's where I met up with Carol in Florida. Um, we did a Q&A in February and um, I show the riser there and I show how you can do a bag on it, you can do a shirt on it. It's really, really cool. So look back at that video and you can see what I'm talking about. And Carol has a kind of an explanation video of it in the, in the Facebook group. Norma wants to know if you'll do a Durky repositionable hoop demonstration. That I'm working on, Norma. I promise I will get it done. <laughs> um, I need to sit down and spend some time with it. It's the splitting the design part that's... And, nah, nah, making sure I have the dimensions right and splitting the design, but then lining up the design on the machine so that when... You stitch out the first part and you go to stitch the second one it meshes perfectly where you can't tell that the design was split that's what i'm struggling with lining it up so as soon as i have that figured out i will post a tutorial on that and that's for anyone's wondering that is for this ginormous hoop that you can get with the persona this is the Durky 8 by 14 multi-positionable hoop so I did this design on it and it came out great. Although I don't think I could do it again if I tried. <laughs> I think I got really lucky with the positioning. Um, I need it to be super straightforward for the tutorial. So I'm still tweaking it. But um, this is, I have a little spider on my thing. <laughs> um, this is the giant hoop that you can get for the persona so that you can go bigger than an eight by eight design. But I still am working on it. So, but this is something that's really cool. All right, so we're done with the purple. So now I am going to switch threads to the blue. And then we're ready to finish up the design and do the ribbon and the back. All right, so I'm just wrapping this around two times. Okay. All right, and now I'm just gonna jump ahead to the outline I want to be blue, rock, and go. So now that is stitching and there's only a couple more steps after that. So after that, it's going to show, it's going to do a line to tell me where to place the ribbon and I'll show you how to put the ribbon in and then it'll stitch the ribbon to it and then we're going to add the backing and that's kind of the cool part and then we're going to fill it um, so that it actually turns into a pillow. So, and I have a couple options for stitching it up, I'll show you because when it stitches, it's going to leave a hole at the bottom so that you can stuff it. And then you have a couple options for closing that hole. For Abigail's, I did, I used something called Fabric Fuse or um, Peel and Stick. You can see that here. Um, this I got from Parker on the Porch for her In the Hoop zippered bag design. This is something they recommend to to fuse the bottom inside of your bag. However, on the pillow, it was it didn't work as great because it's I couldn't pinch it and get it in there enough. 
so it's kind of sticky right here. <laughs> you can kind of still feel it. So I think on Elise's, I'm gonna hand stitch it close. And actually Shannon has, um, that's what she recommends uh, at the bottom of her PDF instructions. She shows you how she, I think it's called a blind stitch, um, where she stitches it closed where you can't see it. So. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, the bar thingy that goes with the hoop. I'm guessing you're talking about the 8 by 14 hoop and the, what's called the tubular support table. Um, so, oh, Shannon says she started using hot glue on her pillows and loving it that way. That's a great idea. I think I'll do that instead. I like it. Okay. So, um, stitch witchery. That works great. That's cool, Delia. All right. So let me get back to, I think someone was asking. So with that eight by 14 frame for the persona, it is so large and pokes out so far from the machine that you have to use a support table to support it. And I can show you when this is done stitching, like why that really comes in handy. But this is the table um, and what it does they have a little lever at the bottom here. And this your your this slides right onto the free arm. And once it's on the free arm, I don't know if it'll let me do it. I think it has to be down. And then it will pull out. But this white piece here will extend out. And then it will so if the hoop is poking out really far, it will support it and hold it underneath. So this is a needed accessory to have if you get the 8x14. Frame. Um, this particular item cannot be sold online. Brother, this is an exclusive item that Brother likes you to go buy from a dealer. Um, however, you can call Sewing Machines Plus and order it over the phone. They just can't sell it online. Okay. Thank you, Carol, and everybody else that's helping with answering questions. All right. Oh, I know what we can do on the on the PE 800. Um, that would be fun. Is I want to make myself. We we'll have to see because Carol's adjusting the riser so that I can put a an, a medium adult shirt on it. Um, I want to make myself a sip and stitch squad shirt. So y'all seen for the past ones. And I still need to mail this to Con. <laughs> Con, this is your hat. Um, this is our Sip and, Sip and Stitch Squad design that I made. Um, and we did a pro, you know, we did a video on this, making this hat on the persona. But the same design would be super cute as a pocket uh, design on a shirt. So that could be something fun we can do on the riser. All right, so my blue is done stitching. All that's left is the black. I thought I had one more. I thought I, I thought I was done, but I wasn't. So I'm going to take the blue thread off and load the black. So, oops, knocking stuff over. All right, this is my new black thread. So I forgot about the face. Okay, and we're going to pull that through. backwards through my steps to the face. All right. Ah. Okay. All right. I 
let's see, Karen wants to know if, the tab if a table can be used instead of the frame. Yes, if you have the extra wide flat table um, that slides on your machine and it essentially turns it into a flatbed machine because it goes flush with the bobbin, that is a great accessory to have to help support. Yes, so you can use that instead of the tubular frame. Oh great, Norma said she bought it in the store and she's saying I'm discount. Love me some discounts. Oh, bye Linda. I hope you have a great night and a great weekend. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right. So. One of the things I love about the Prasana is it cuts the jump stitches. And so if you're coming from a PE 800, this is really, the free arm is a game changer as far as an upgrade, but cutting the jump stitches is so nice too. So, all right, we are done with the face. So now the next thing it's going to do is show me the placement for the ribbon. And I didn't want to do that in black. It shouldn't show, but just to be, Safe, I'm gonna switch it back to white. But all of these are gonna be the inside stitches of the pillow, so they shouldn't be seen. But, and you can see that on Abby's too, because I think I did Abby's in pink, but black is just so contrasting that I'm gonna change it back to white just to be safe. thread. So now I'm going to fast forward to the placement stitch for the ribbon. And that's just going to be a line across the top. And I'm going to look at my computer and make sure I follow the instructions correctly. <laughs> Let me pull up that PDF. I am pretty sure that yeah so you are going to so if you think about it when I pull this up so it's going to stitch it this way but when I pull it up it's going to be the glitter side showing forward so it's the only thing with this particular ribbon, it's glitter on one side and not on the other. So when you tie it, you are going to see both sides. So it doesn't matter too much, but I do want the glitter side um, to show from the front. So I hope I'm thinking about that right. Shannon, am I thinking about that right? <laughs> All right. Hi, Shana. Okay, I don't know if Shana is still here. So, Lenise, this is the Brother Persona PRS 100. This is my baby. Her name is Pearl. So, I think I'm thinking about that right. So, what I'm going to do is, and I think I'm going to use some tape because I want to make sure that these stay in the right spot. But, you're putting it to where the stitch line is gonna be right here. So you have a little bit of, of what do you call, uh, seam allowance, I guess. So you're gonna go in about a quarter inch from the top of the ribbon. And I'm not putting it all the way to the corners. I'm going about um, a half an inch from the sides, but I'm trying to keep them both to where they're kind of equal distance from the corners. So I don't think I'm gonna have to tape it as long as I, um, I hold these pieces up like this. So just kind of place it. I'm gonna tape it just to be safe. 
because it might shift across. So just do that there and then you could pull that off after. All right. So the next stitch is going to do another straight line across and that's going to tack that down. Okay. Yes, glitter side down. Good. I'm glad I did it right, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. And so I'm holding these where I don't get pulled in. Okay. So now I can pull the tape off. And so the last step is putting the back of the pillow on it and making it all together. So there's a couple tricks to this. We need to first roll up our ribbon and that's going to be on the inside the pillow. And I, I didn't tape it for when I did it on my flatbed machine, but I'm sure it wouldn't hurt. And I think once we, when we turn it back inside out, it'll be easy to untape. So you just want to kind of pull those in. I don't think that did anything. <laughs> to hold that down and in place. All right, then we're going to take the fabric that's going to be the back of the pillow and we're going to face it down. So we want the right sides together. Like this. And that would, when it helps if you're the ribbon I have is very stiff, so it's poking up high. So I'm trying to smush that down and keep it flat. But now it's going to do an outline stitch. And it's not important that this stays super flat. It's okay if it's crinkly because you're going to put stuffing in it and turn it into a pillow. So it's not something that needs to be flat. But if, it, if you wanted, you could tape these down to just kind of hold it in place, but I think it's fine like this. So now it's going to do the outline stitch for the pillow, but it's going to have the little hole at the bottom so that we could stuff it. So let's see how that goes. Tape is gold. Tape is one of my favorite tools for embroidery, especially for in the hoop projects. And then when I do onesies and kid shirts on the on the PE 770, uh, I use tape to keep all the extra fabric out the way. Okay, so we are done. And I didn't do my little song because. It hit the name, but usually when you're done stitching, it does dun 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 the song. Okay, so now let me move y'all. So we're all done. Move my drink. <laughs> so we can pop this out of the hoop now. That is done. Now, one of the things that Shannon recommends is you cut 
these corners. And then you can also, because I have a lot of tear away um, going on because I use such a bigger hoop, we can tear right along the seam here. You don't have to worry about tearing away the inner part of the towel, the towel, the pillow. Um, you don't have to worry about removing any of that. So we just removed that tear away. Um, so because it's a pillow and you want your, your corners to come out nice, um, we're going to cut just the corner like this as close to that corner there and then cut. So you have something like this. So we'll do that for all the corners. All right. And so we have all the corners cut and now this is our hole at the bottom. So we are going to slowly work the pillow to be right side out. So this is kind of similar to when we did the in the hoop zippered bags, except my ribbon is stiff. So that's going to be the part that's going to need some working through. The rest of the pillow is soft because it's all just cotton, woven cotton and a little bit of, of fleece. I got all my tape on my ribbon. Slowly working this out. Take your time so that you're not pulling on. Do you do the, the the final stitch does go around a few times, so like it shouldn't come undone. Um, but still, you know, take your time. Don't be too rough. But my ribbon is what's the problem for me right now. There we go. Now it's coming out a little bit better. All right. So. And so I just use my finger here to kind of point that corner. Um, you could also use, like I have my little stylus for my machine. It's not too pointy. You can use a pencil eraser, a um, like the eraser end of a pencil, um, or a chopstick. So I'm just gonna turn the corners here. And now we have a little cute pillow. Isn't they're cute? So cute. I have to say, Elise did do a good job picking out. I love the, the blue and the pink tie-dye. I think that's super cute. All right, so the next thing you want to do is, so you have your hole at the bottom, but we want to go ahead and press this with your, um, with your iron just to get it all pressed nice and get your seams pressed. So we're going to go over to the iron. Let me get all my stuff out of the way. All right. So I have my pillow and I'm just tucking in. I have a little stray thread here I'm going to cut. Just tucking in where the seam will be and I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with my parchment paper I have my little mini iron so that that is nice and pressed so you can see that here how cute. All right, so now we're going to stuff the pillow. 
So you can just get some filling. I was able to get mine at Walmart. They do sell it um, at craft stores and on Amazon if you can't get to a craft store, but this is what I'm using. Let me unplug my iron. Okay, so I just grab a handful out of the bag like that and just stuff it through the little hole until it gets as full as what you want it to be. So let me go and see if we have any questions while I'm doing this. Oh Lord, y'all talking about putting your finger in the, in the needle, getting a needle in the finger with the, the machines, the sewing machines. <laughs> yeah, needle in the finger is no fun. I'm very lucky I have not experienced it yet and I hope I never do. Hope, hope, hope I never do. <laughs> but I've seen in some of the, the groups, um, embroidery groups and stuff I am, people have posted like pictures of their x-ray of the fingers, the needle through the fingers, like no. No, no, no. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> so, there are no questions that haven't already been addressed. Thank you, Miss Carol. So, everybody's having a good night so far. Y'all ready for the weekend? I mean, we, we always have a full weekend of dancing. That's what I do on the weekends. I go to dancing school with my girls. Let's see, one more needle in the finger comment and someone will have to call the local EMS. <laughs> Are you you in um, close to your cabin, Carol? Because I saw you sent me some videos earlier. Are y'all going to stay at the cabin this weekend to start, um, to start cleaning it? Your eye. I see. So the purpose of the ribbon is we're going to, I'm not too good at tying bows, but we're going to tie it in a bow and we're going to hang it on the kid's bedroom doorknob. I really tried to get Elise, it's in my other room to show y'all, but I had a roll of pom-poms, like uh, it was it was like little pink string with little pink pom-poms hanging. And I thought that would have been so cute for this. And I just would have, I wouldn't have done two strips. I just would have did one single continuous piece to where it, um, it could hang on the knob like that. But she, she wasn't having it. She wanted this purple glitter. So that's what she got. So that's what the, the ribbon's gonna do. It's gonna allow you to hang this on the kid's doorknob so that when the tooth fairy comes, he won't, he or she won't accidentally wake up the kid trying to go in their room under their pillow and so that you can just leave the tooth in the pocket and then the tooth fairy can very conveniently leave some money in the pocket for the kid for the next morning. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So I think I am done stuffing my pillow. Ninety-seven thumbs need three more, please. <laughs> okay. Beats diving under the pillow. Yes. Yes, it does. I'm very excited about this. Y'all have no idea. <laughs> okay. So now I might do Shannon's suggestion and hot glue it, but I don't know where my hot glue gun is right now. So I might do that later or tomorrow, but this is the final project. So when you're done, you can try hot gluing the little hole. So you can just push the stuffing down so you had a nice a nice flat surface. You can get some iron on, iron hem tape. You can do the peel and stick, but just try and get it lower than what I did for Abigail's pillow. So this is the, the peel and stick you can try and put in there, or you can just take a simple needle and thread 
with some white thread and stitch that close and try and make it to where it's um, you hide the stitches in the what's going to be the seam. So, but that's it. That's our project for tonight. I think it came out super cute. And if you wanted to see, this is a side by side of the six by ten pillow with the five by seven pillow. So you see, it is a bit smaller, but they're both still super cute and either one works really well. And I think these make really nice um, gifts for kids. And um, like I said, on Shannon's Etsy shop, um, Lovely Leaf Applique, she has tons of cute designs, all different kinds of tooth themes, um, cute themes for boys, cute themes for girls, um, all kinds of characters. So lots and lots of fun stuff there. And I have a coupon code in the description box below. It's Carly Bell 20 and that will give you 20% off your purchase. And I think she also has like really good deals where you could buy like, I, I don't want to say the, uh, don't listen to me because I might be saying the wrong thing. If you buy four designs, you get one free, something like that, um, with the, with the pillows. So y'all check that out, but that is our project for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you are watching the replay and you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I go and try and answer all the questions. I've been slacking for the past week. I need to catch up, but um, you can leave a question in the comments and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, <laughs> Carol said, thank you squad members. It was a fun night, except for the, all the talking about the needles and the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> except for the needle part um the five by seven is your favorite shannon yeah they're so cute they're so so cute um so yay deal your um your grandchildren just started losing teeth so yeah i'm a little late to the show with abigail abigail has already lost eight teeth eight <laughs> she's eight years old and she's lost eight teeth um, but she actually had, I think one of her incisors was loose. She showed me the other day. So we might be using this soon. And then Abby lost her first tooth in kindergarten and Elise is in pre-K. So it's coming. Um, so this will be good for Elise. And I'm glad she got to pick out what she wanted for it. And I made it just like what she wanted. Cause Lord help me if I make things the way I like, no, she won't like it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shannon, for hanging out with us and, um, and contacting me and giving the discount code. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. So I hope everyone had a great night and I will see y'all in two more weeks. We'll do a sip and stitch on Friday, April 2nd. Um, stay tuned for what we will do. And the way you stay tuned is being in the Facebook group. That's usually where I make announcements. Follow me on Facebook. Um, just look up Carly Bell on Facebook. I have the link actually down all the way at the bottom of the description box. I have links to all my social media, but if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see where I post about the sip and stitch updates, join the newsletter, the email newsletter, and, um, and then check out the sip and stitch homepage on my website, carlybell.com. Um, and that's where you can stay up to date on everything that's going on. Cause I'm not a very good planner. I'm not, you know, I don't have it planned out three months in advance for you. I plan it out a few days before. <laughs> so, but I like the idea of doing an Embrilliance tutorial and definitely a PE 800 tutorial and possibly on the riser that Miss Carol makes. So y'all can learn all about that. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining me tonight and sticking through my technical battery. Um, microphone issues but other than that I think it went really well I'm excited about the cameras I'm, ex I'm excited about um, things look like I, I like this new setup so um, I appreciate y'all being here and I will see you next time I don't know how to stop the video that's the only thing okay now I see it <laughs> bye <laughs>